Hello everyone. I wanted uh, one of these kind of inspection work lights for some time. And they're quite good, like a wand, you hold on to them and they've got a 40 LED LED panel, COB chip on board, wiry loop at the end, nice control, some sort of indication of the power levels, a swivel mount on the base, which goes to about 35 degrees, which you can clamp. And uh, yeah, quite a good idea for poking up under the vehicle and having a look around, you know, sort of whizzing about. And uh, so I thought, well, yeah, let's get one. So I looked online and there was two variants and they both of them look like this. They've got various brands. The one I bought is branded Renon Renogy and it's slightly more expensive than this one, probably about 10% more. This was like 21 90 or something for two for a pair of them. And this one was about 19 pounds for a pair of them and i thought oh god i'd hate to buy the the wrong one and think oh you know you know you'd like to know you're getting something that's the best one and which is the best out of these two so to save you the aggravation i bought two of each and i've tested them out over a couple of weeks and uh, here's my thoughts what it's worth it might help you decide and um you know if there was no difference between these two, then this video would be a waste of time. But actually, there is a big difference. And I wonder if you can uh, guess which one is far superior. Which one isn't? I have no relationship with any of these people that make these or sell these. I've had no free samples. This is just from me to you, so you can buy the right one. I'm going to send this, the one that I don't want back. And I'll show you why, so carry on watching. So the you know, design is a bit different, you know, it's got the uh, grippy parts there, the non-slip grip in the front for your fingers, whereas this one's got it at the side. This has got more dimples in its spinny wheel, this one's got less dimples in its spinny wheel. This one's got a single charge indicator. Red is uh, charging and blue is fully charged. And this one's got the socket in the uh, underneath the rubber flappy bit here. These aren't waterproof, by the way. There's no water protection on them at all. So, USB mi mi micro USB charging socket in the side, and this one's got a four level charging, four charging uh, uh, level indication in the back and a, a rear flap for rear entry. Right. So, which one is best? So we've got the uh, this one's um, marketed. This one here. Let's just move that one out of the way so you know what I'm talking about. This is the eye shield which is kind of curious because it doesn't really shield your eyes. Um, 3000 milliamp hours, it says. COB working lamp. Working voltage battery, obviously four to 800 lumens. So that's the range between there and there, four and 800, we'll test that later. All right, so an uh, usual thing, you know, but I think they sell this with several different brandings. Or this one, but the actual product itself is unbranded, you'll notice, but it has got the China export CE sticker on it. Now, the Renogy is feels a bit heavier, actually, feels quite a bit heavier than the other one. So, we've got a bit of extra weight in there from somewhere, and same sort of control, um, same angle here. This arrangement down the bottom is the same when you stand them up and lean them over, they'll go to about I'd say the angle between here and the desk, that angle there is probably about 50 degrees and that's the farthest they'll go, which is actually a bit of a pain really, it's a shame because when you're working under the car they're great for wine, um, to, you know, whizzing around and pushing up behind the bulkhead to see whether you can see anything. They're a good inspection lamp, but when you actually come to using it as a work lamp, underneath the car they're not a lot of use because there's hardly anything horizontal to stick it to and when you stick it to the light's shining up at an angle. 40 or 55 degrees or something like that and it's um it's not as good but you can hang it on things obviously you can see there's a slight difference in the hook um quality of molding i'd say they are they look pretty similar mm -hmm. that one creaks <laughs> Yeah, this one's bendier than this one. This one feels a bit stronger, to be honest, but that could be where the extra weight is coming from, couldn't it? And um, magnetic-wise, there's a metal shelf just there in front. I don't know if I can actually see the shelf or not. Can you? No, you can't, but I'm going to put it on there. That was the uh, Renogy, and this one's the eye shield. And you, I don't know if you can hear that, but the eye shield 
is not as strong as the Renogy. The Renogy has got much stronger. They both sit okay in the angle, but the Renogy has got much stronger magnet on it than the other one, than the ice shoe, right? So that's the two of them. And yeah, as I say before, we've got a, we have on this one, on the more expensive Renogy, we have the uh, five LED power indicator, power level indicator, which is quite useful. Just there. Just there, you can see it, and then the, the uh, USB micro USB charge socket and a slightly different shape loop on the end. All right, so that's two. So, which one's best? Let's take them apart and find out. And that, that, that thing, so if I turn it on, you can see you've got uh, four of the old LEDs there. And they do count down. It's the same as the charge bank type indicator. You get to the last one and then the light goes off, but at least you've got a warning about where, where you are charge-wise. And I think that feature on its own is worth a couple of quid extra, actually. And then you've got USB-C charging socket on, on the back. This one's, as we said, on the side. Both of them covered up by a little rubber flappy, rubber flappy job. There's no claims that this is waterproof, this product, by the way. So if you took it out in the rain, how water got in there it's likely you know it's going to damage the thing i don't think it's waterproof for, for a start for 10 quid what do you expect um so going on to the actual function of these things look uh, if i just turn the lights off and here we've got the renault oh you can't see i just turn the light on here, here you've got the renology and this one's the eye shield and if i just turn the eye shield on you can see instantly uh, the minimum brightness on the eye shield is much lower and I turn it up to full power and it's maximum brightness there and then it doesn't really change it actually gets less bright can you just see that dimming at the end of the last third of a turn it actually dims so the useful range is from off well zero basically where you probably wouldn't I can just see this and the room's not very bright so this is probably not really usable until it gets to here somewhere so you've got an active range of uh, lighting control with the con with the uh, rotation of the thing of about 30 or 40 percent 40 percent of the control actually in a useful range but it is it's perfectly controllable it works fine so but it's a much lower light level so you could use its pat potentially as a night light or something like that if you're traveling and it would last all night because I know from experience that when the LEDs are just glowing like that, there's just literally a couple of milliamps in there. So, you know, this, this should last a couple of hundred hours easier at that level. Uh, but obviously when you go up here, you're taking a lot more current from the battery. These are both fully charged at the moment. I haven't had them out of the box before, obviously. So if I turn the uh, Renology on, you can see it's either quite bright. It's, uh, if we just... can see the LEDs. There's nothing for it to focus on. Yeah, so if I turn the Renology on now, this is Renology, that's minimum setting for Renology. That's minimum setting for the eye shield. And you can see that you can't even hardly see it until it turns up. So they're about the same to me, and they look about the same there. So the eye shield's on probably 30, 40% turn, and then you turn it up full brightness, and you've got another third left. So, you know, it's less controllable, but it does have a much greater range of brightness. Whereas this one, we're going to measure this with the light meter. I've got a professional light meter. We'll be able to tell us how bright they are. And uh, I'll turn it up full brightness. It is brighter. So the Renology is a little bit brighter, actually quite a bit brighter than the eye shield, okay? But, you know, if you want one that turns down much lower than uh, for a nightlight or type of arrangement, then it might work. So I suppose what I can do is put this on time-lapse photography, put these things on time-lapse photography, and uh, we'll see how long they last, because the battery layout life um, at maximum power is obviously an interesting thing. So this one does feel more solid. I don't know whether it's the plastic or whether it's just got a better battery in it. 
I imagine the Renology has got a better battery. We'll find out when we open them up, shall we? This is when we really find out what the problem is inside. So you've got the lights. We'll do a light output test. We'll do a lighting power duration test of the batteries. What we'll do now is we're going to take these apart and do a amp power capacity test on check on the battery to find out why this one's much heavier than the other one. So do we have to, we have to take this ball off, don't we? This clamp down the bottom needs to come off. The pure beauty of it all. There you are. Okay, so then when I, oh, come on, focus, you focusing thing. Oh, bloody hell, it's my glasses that are not in focus. Take it all back, camera. Yeah, look, okay, so that's off, and it will split along this split line down the side. When I take all these screws out, there are two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine screws. So... You've got one of those little electric screwdrivers actually, quite handy. My son bought it for me. It comes in a lovely case from AliExpress. There they are, the lovely balls. Bits and pieces all lined up, or bits actually, on the other pieces. Not sure what that brush is for. I, I don't think it's anything to do with it actually. That's from my uh, it's from my brush box. And um, yeah, it's a slide you like. Oh, I'm James Bond. It's like a cigar holder case, but with electric screwdriver in. But they're quite nice, actually. And if you go like that and you go, click, it clicks in, you press it and it pops out. Not the sort of thing you want to put in your pocket. It's quite heavy. And then you've got a USB chargeable. It's got a USB-C chargeable charging socket on the end. And then left and right. And then lock, forward and reverse, or undo and redo, or do up, or whatever. tighten and loosen. Let's take this thing apart, shall we? Yes, let's do it. Give me that. It doesn't have a heap of torque, this thing, but you can just crack it open by hand and then hit the button and you're away. Look at that. So what are you thinking so far? I know what I think. It's not for me to decide, it's for you to decide. Based on the evidence, I hate these buying things where you buy one because it's a few quid cheaper. And then you'll never know, how can you live not knowing whether you've done the right thing or not? One might be lovely, the other one, this one might be a complete bag of spam, you just don't know. Actually, nothing wrong with spam, I like spam. Anyway, it doesn't, never trust a man who doesn't like spam. You know, camp with my parents, it was a um, can of Spam and eggs instead of bacon, because it was uh, baked beans, lovely. And then fried eggs, lovely. And uh, instead of, I don't know why they had a thing about camping, but instead of taking sugar for the tea and milk, we used to take a tin of condensed milk. And... Yeah, a tin of condensed milk, and uh, that was that was that was the flavour of camping. That was. Anyway, uh, yeah, rough old bit of tooling inside, but you can see still machining marks. It looks all right. It's that. It feels like that very. ABS is a mixture of plastic, a uh, uh, not polycarb, not polyester, acrylic. Anyway, it's a mixture of acrylic and rubber. And the grade of ABS you have, it's malleable. And some ABS is quite tough, but when you fold it, it'll just fold up. And you'll get, uh, you know, if it's a dark thing like this, you'll get the white where it's cracking. But it's quite malleable. But the harder, cheaper ABS has got more poly... more acrylic in it anyway, which is the crispy, crunchy stuff. And uh, so the cheaper ABS is more brittle and easy broke, easily broken, but probably stiffer. So if you want it stiff... But easily to break then you know you have a cheap plastic like this and if you want something that might bounce and deform um, but reasonably strong but you have to make a thicker wall thickness then you'd have the abs which is more expensive which has got more um, elastomer type uh, compound in it than crystals crystalline compound right so anyway no recycling marks but you wouldn't expect that it's got a on there to save the cavity but you know 
can't expect too much, can you? No, you can't. Okay, so I have put all my screws in the pot. Okie dokie. So we've got a battery that says on it. From bear in mind, what does it say on the box before I reveal this? This is the this is the Renology we're taking apart. So the Renology says 2,200 milliamp battery. We're going to test that uh, for 3.5 to 20 hours. We can measure the LED current and try it and just see what it does. What we got? Yeah, the battery does say on it. 2,200 milliamp hours. So the printing is correct. It meets the specification. It's feeling quite a heavy battery. I wonder if that's where the different in weight is. So you got, it says 2,200. We'll test the battery. I've got a professional test meter, an electronic load up there, and it's got lithium ion battery test mode on it. I'll, I'll put a picture on it for you. But you can just connect it up and measure the capacity of lithium ions. Got charge controller chip here, a proper charge controller chip for the lithium battery. Also controls the lights on the back. There's a little PCB, daughter PCB, which goes onto the switches. We could go into super macro mode, couldn't we? And then focus you focusing thing. There you go. How is that? Soldering looks alright, doesn't it? And you've got a chip on there. You've got this chip that's going to be used as a ton of PWM drive for the, for the LEDs. Presumably that photo, that transistor there is switching the current. Uh, 6.8 ohm resistors in parallel, 3 ohms. So it's got... Why would you need those if you're PWM driving? It's just wasting the power. I don't understand that. R680, it's 0.68 ohm, aren't they? So there's 2.68 ohm resistors, which is handy because we can measure the current going in the LEDs by doing a computation of the voltage that's generated across those resistors. There's the charging socket sticking up. And what is that chip there? Can't see, it's probably some Holtec micro or something. It doesn't necessarily have to be a dedicated, I would do it with a, with a cheap 5 cent micro, whatever they cost. And there's the LED, the back of the LED, in fact. Can it come out or is it stuck in? Stuck in. I'm not going to take it out at the moment. I'm not going to take it out. It's kind of stuck in and I think I might break it. I want to test this further. Okay. So is that, are the, is that resistor in series with the... Yeah, it is. Live minus, line plus. Those wires don't look like they've been soldered on particularly well. They haven't come through the board, but they might just be tacked on the other side. There's no components on the other side. I'm not on blood taking out. So that's that one. And look, what got fell off? You might not have seen that fall off there. But on the back of the LED strip is an aluminium heat strip. It just sits over the back. Yeah, it's good some thermal inertia, you know, basically it's thermal capacity to absorb the heat from the uh, and a heat sink. Although it wouldn't necessarily radiate much better, but it would stay cooler for longer. If you think about it, it would even out any hot spots. So if you've got some of them running hotter than the others, it would even out the temperature across the range and also help to lose some of the heat in the casing by increasing the surface area by, but not by much. But it would be much slower to heat up, so when you turn it on, you don't notice... You know, with a high power LED, if you give it full beans, it looks bright. But if you have a meter, you can see the power drop as the LED chip heats up. And it happens very quickly. The actual uh, chip itself, the actual silicone uh, junction where the LED is uh, glowing from. They, uh... So, anyway, this is a heavy one, the Renology. Let's take the other one apart and see what we get. Same old procedure. Loosen up our nuts. Well, the, whoever's done the tooling has made the holes a bit tighter. No, these are um, these are flattened screws. They're not pointy. The other ones are pointy. So there's a difference in the screws they've used. They've got pointy screws, and this one hasn't got pointy screws. 
Type it's type A, B, and type A, I think it's called. A, B is like a slightly tapered tip, but with no point. The idea is that you can drive it into the plastic and have a deeper hole without it poking through the front panel if you're securing clamshells together. That's the point of that. That's... There's the one I missed. Bugger. See you down there. Come on. Oh, I see. It's that rubber part soldering together then. So, clamshell. Screws. Screws. Things I do for you, taking bloody lights apart. Right. Okay. This one's got a CE sticker on it. A China export. We know that anyway. Um, nice a bit of tooling inside. Much sharper, sharper tooled. Not that it makes much difference, but... Yeah. This doesn't look... Look at this, see if you can see this, maybe you can see. Can you see how much shinier that one is? Can you see? This one has slightly different grade of plastic. If you look at where the flat parts are, the shiny bits, this is duller. And I disregard that, I don't know any difference. All right, so here we go. We've got, back, got our board upside down on this one. That's bloody inconvenient of them. And they've wired the pot in, look, so they haven't got the daughter board with the pot. We've got a battery, which is a Hongqi, Hongqi, H-O-N-G-C-I, Hongqi, no specification. Cool, it does, I'll tell you what, though. I'll tell you what, let's just do a quick check on this to see if we can make a prediction. Right. Been to the pub today. It's Sunday. There you go. So let's put that one on there. It's not going to be an absolute yet. Oh, no. Wait, okay, grams. There we are. So let's tear it again. 39 be the number of the grams. Oh look, they've trapped the lead in the case. You can see there. Uh, 39 with the Honchi pink battery. Look at that, they sold the, is that spot welded or they just soldered that onto the... Do you know what? Oh, this has actually got the strips on. Um, maybe they sold it on the strips and spot weld the strips on afterwards. But I've heard tell of um, lots of Chinese companies using second-hand batteries and new products from things like traction batteries from cars. It sounds feasible, doesn't it? It's easy to believe, that one. Because they lose their capacity, but they've got still plenty of uh, useful life left in them. And that one is... 45... Thirty-four, thirty-nine, and forty-four. So I think they're the same, don't you? Because you've got a bit of uh, extra wiring inside this one. There, you've got extra wires, and these wires are a bit thicker. See if I can just dangle it. Yeah, there's not a great difference in weight, if there's any difference. So it's not going to be that. All right. So let's just uh, try putting one half together with the other half, and make a Franklin light. So quick look at the electronics then. I don't think there's going to be anything remarkable in there at all. Pull the electronics board out. Uh, pokey thing. There's our little lens for the LED. We've got just one chip. All right, so, yeah, well, there's the beans for you. That's really what's going to do it for me. I don't know about you. If I just go in and zoom in on this. Okay, here's the board. Here's the board. And you've got a... That's interesting. Look, it has got um, 
two LEDs there behind the actual lens, so maybe it does change colour. Maybe I was unfair to it, maybe it does change colour when it's charged. I'm going to have to test that and come back to you because it says B and R, blue and red. Okay, so why would you want two chest? Um, the red one certainly comes on, but I've never seen the blue one come on. But there is a charge controller, 405, 4056C, 4056C, which is a lithium ion charge management uh, unit. Okay, so that, that chip there is actually manages your battery and everything else. So the question is, how do they control the brightness on this? We've got a charge control chip, but we don't have the other chip we had on here on the Renology for the uh, LED control, okay? Now, if there's no PWM drive on the LED on this one, it's going to seriously infect the battery life when you're not working at full, full brightness because it's going to be inefficient. But there doesn't seem to be on here any particular large heat dissipating resistors. There's a series protection diode to check for the polarity, which you'd think would be wasted actually, because is that what that is? Yeah, you'd think that'd be wasted because um yeah, it's in in the power line. Yeah. Well, you'd have to have a badly wired USB cables to put your, your uh, polarity in the wrong way, so it's a bit strange. This one doesn't have one. But it doesn't need it unless you've got a badly wired computer or something. With the potential, uh, with the polarity reversed. RM, RM. Jesus. But Jesus! There must be some active uh, switching somewhere. Surely they just don't... They're... So let's get the old thermal camera out. Where are you? There you are. Let's see what's getting hot when you turn this on. Let's put it on half brightness. About there. there. Well, actually, you can't read, but they're about half brightness. See what the old camera says. The camera never lies. There's my finger. There's my finger again. And there's a circuit board. Ooh. So yeah, as my tweezers going in, I'm trying to locate what the actual source of heat is. It's just there where the end of my tweezers are. Metal tweezers, of course. And it's that little transistor. That little Johnny there is taking the hit, plus its associated components, okay? So is the drive for this LED, is it some kind of oscillator, do you think? Like PWM thing they've done cleverly with on transistors. I can see a capacitor and a resistor. So maybe it is. Let's turn the scoop on and have a look. I might feel the heat with my finger. Yeah, that's Ooh, that is warm. That is warm. The transistor is warm. Right out of the way. I just want to put a scope on this and see if there's any play switching going on or whether it's just a linear controller. I'm surprised they can dump all that heat into that SOT SOT23 transistor. It's a tiny package. But you never know. So there's the mine. So I'm going to stick the scope on there. Scope on that end. And I'm just going to see what's on here, on the LED. No. Ah, uh, well, there you go. You can see that transistor guy cooking away there. Is that a red spot in the middle? It's not 33.5, it's a lot hotter than that. It's just that the, uh, yeah, so the hot spot's in the middle there, and the hot spot is that transistor. And I got my finger on it, and it's pretty hot still. Let's turn it up more. I'm guessing they must have heat sink on this. Yeah, look, they've put a complete uh, plane of copper under here. So if I look at this, you'll see. 
that piece of copper getting hotter than the other piece. You can see it, there's the heat on the copper from the transistor over the side. So it's a linear regulator with no uppy downy action on the uh, actual LED drive. No, let's turn the gain up a bit more. No, smooth, just DC circuit. And there's the, yeah. Right, so it's just a straightforward linear bet being used as a, a resistor on the big heat sink. So, you know, the difference between a linear regulator is that if you've got four volts coming in and 3.6 going out, then the, the actual power has been lost here. It's not like a pulse switching where you're digitally switching and you're pulsing a much higher current, but you're off the rest of the time. So the only power you lose then is actually in the switching stage, which is very, very little. But if you've got a linear resistor, basically this is just acting as a resistor in series with the LEDs to dim the LEDs. So at 50% brightness, 50% of the energy from the battery will be wasted on this board. How oh, hot is that getting? Yeah, I mean, it's only that the LED itself is barely warm at the moment, barely warm. So yeah, this one, is a lot less sophisticated than this one in terms of the control and I expect this one to be a lot less efficient okay it's a cheaper product a few quid in it and it's got a lot less governance inside so what I'm going to do now is just um, put them back together actually the other thing is that this one this one doesn't have the actual extra metal part inside does it maybe that accounts for the extra weight this piece of metal does the uh, the cheap, the cheaper of the two light lamps doesn't have the actual metal heat sink. So now that we know it's just a resistor and effect, we know why this uh, control transfer characteristic between rotary control here, the drive of the gate of the FET, because the FET's not linear. And it's a horrifically difficult thing to, to get to work in a sensible way, because there's usually a quite a spread between the, the uh, source drain voltage that activates this, the FET varies from batch to batch and from FET to FET so you have to make it so it accommodates all so it, but it has got the advantage of having a very low brightness at low levels but again when you've got low levels of the thumb setting wheel you've got quite a low brightness but again all the series energy has been dissipated in the FET and on the board so you've got a lot of heat being lost energy from the battery being lost in the form of heat okay so what I'll do now is I'm going to turn these off and I will just do a battery test. I'll run you over the battery test for this. Um, I'll do a battery test, measure the capacity of the batteries, to make sure, see what that is, a 2200, uh, and what this one is and whether they're the same. And then we'll just do the light test. So here's the two. I put the uh, Renergy one back together, lovely jubbly, and uh, it's just done the discharge test. And I've been charging it for a while. We can see you've got the three out four dots. So. Yeah, I'll talk about the battery test. I've been testing the actual cell itself, the 18650 cell, the capacity of the same. And I can tell you that um, even though that the, the uh, eye shield one says it's 3000 milliamp hours on the box, is actually just a, the average of the two runs, we're very close together, 1087 milliamp hours. That's a discharge at 600 milliamps. And that's the number of uh, amp hours capacity. So it's it's a one million, it's a one amp hour battery basically, or one point one nearly. Um, now the reason for that is it is quite a weighty cell, and usually you can tell how good they are by the weight of them. But these, I'm pretty sure, um, I'm pretty pretty sure, almost certainly sure that they are second hand. Can you see this uh, lug here, which has been pulled off so the old lug has been pulled off and they've just slapped a soldered wire on the top with sparrow shit soldering and the same at this end you can see there's the old tab where it's been cut off bent back and then uh, reused so this is a cell that's come from either an EV electric vehicle or some other application like a standby power bank where the capacity has been dropping because it's been charged and discharged maybe three four hundred times it's still got some good life in it, but it's not fit for purpose in the application they've got it in for. So 
it's second hand i'm pretty sure and you don't get these cells that haven't got any amp hour rating written on them that's my writing haven't got any amp hour rating on them or any information they are second hand i'm pretty sure in the chinese second hand market used cells being palmed off in new products of course they wouldn't put necessarily that it's an old cell because let's face it you wouldn't buy the bloody thing would you no you wouldn't anyway so it's a bit of a bird shit job it hasn't got the pwm it's only got a linear regulator with this big copper heat sink the reason this is not a very good design is that you've got a a smaller battery and b you've got this inefficient switching circuit which controls the brightness via this pot on the front it's a linear regulator and the heat generated by that linear regulation process is dissipated through this big copper area at the back all this part here is just a simple heat sink to stop that tiny FET that's doing the regulating effectively acting as a variable resistor controlled by the pot gets hot so the heat's got to go and the heat goes into there and so the heat you know you're losing heat so you're losing power so the power that's lost in here should be dissipated in the LED to produce you light that's what you want you want light so we're going to do next um, the lighting test where we'll just do a time lapse photography of both of them in a dark room side by side, do the light measurement with the light measurement gear uh, to tell what the output is. And then you can make your own, up, own mind up about uh, which one of these products to buy. Down there's Renology. We're just checking the battery. It's connected to the via these leads up through there, up through the big test leads to the electronic load. And the Renology scores its uh, standard discharge battery test program. And it discharges the battery at constant current. I did it at 500 milliamps, which is about the quinth of light on full brightness. And Renology scored 1.665 amp hours. It shuts off the current and stops the test when you reach the trigger voltage, which is 3.2 volts here. Oh. 3.3 .3 volts down there because of the drop in the leads okay okay what we've got here is our spectrometer it's a specially designed a thing we did for measuring uh the quality of light for growing plants so synthesis it, it measures the efficacy of a light source in terms of what a plant wants right so that's what i asked for but it's perfectly good what we want to do which is a comparative measurement of these two battery powered work lights now we've got the measurement cell here which is a calibrated cell connected to this which is a one millimeter uh, calibrated comes a certificate fiber optic cable which comes and emerges from the there so the light goes through the cable into there and this whole thing is a calibrated um, light measurement system okay this cable on its own costs about 500 pounds it's very expensive we've broken two already so on uh, yeah and a long story uh, and this is just the i haven't got the power supply for this so i have to rig in a, a charger from my bench power supply which you can probably hear wearing away in the background so if we go into plant synthesis there and do a measurement you can see we've got some uh, data come up on the screen hopefully stick in my case a chopstick uh, this is the value the exposure value ignore that that's to do to the function of the size of this aperture and the exposure time for the array that's in here that's doing the measurement or actually up here the actual sensor in there um, the e is the energy per square meter so this is uh one einstein would be um one watt per square meter i think or is it but anyway, so this is um, giving us uh, 1,12,836.82 milliwatts per meter squared. So that's the energy of the light photons. That's the actual um, uh, V equals F lambda frequency times the wavelength of all the photons are landing in a square meter add up to that much energy in this office at the moment on that spot there. Uh, this is the color temperature so this light in here the combination of the lights is coming up at uh, 3904 kelvin so it's not super blue white light it's kind of more like a daylight which these spots these um high color coverage um spot spotlights we've got in here 
are giving us a nice daylight uh, appearance okay for this light and then this is the plant uh, effectively so this is the number of moles so moles is 6.02 times 10 to the 23 photons and the it's uh, 31.82 moles per meter squared per second and the plant likes it because it's all in the plant area so the effective plant illumination is higher so this is the stuff that plants like in the red area here and the blue area here but I digress because we're testing work lights all right so if I just um, waft uh, one of these work lights over the top of this thing and do a measurement just turn it on so you can see we've got a different measurement now we've got a measurement of 5600 these are 6000 K lights so that's the that's the equivalent radiation from a hot body at 6,000 Kelvin in that light. It's a very blue-white light. And uh, we've, we've jumped up to 53.634 milliwatts per square meters. All right. And that's the spectrum. You see, it's all mostly blue with some orange going down into the red. And down here at 660 would be a very deep crimsony red color. And beyond this is near infrared. All right. So... But what this has got on here though if i go back to the main so that's the way it works but to compare these two lights this is what the whole purpose of this process is if we skip out of here let's get a bit closer so you can see what we're doing all right if we just go into transmittance we can do a comparison of two light sources if i take one of these lights Actually, I'll leave this light on here and I'll just do a source. So we do the source and the reference. And there's the comparison. And the comparison that you've got is along that top line. And you can see it's very nearly, if we put it in percent, you can see there's zero percent because I took a source and reference from the same. These are all the wavelengths down here. And you can see that there was zero difference between the two because. I did it exactly the same light, which is a light source in my office, all right? So now, if I just um, place this in a position directly above the sensor, I'll move the sensor out of the way a little bit and move that over to that side there. And we'll then go back to the main reading. And if I just put this, I've set up a place here where I can clamp this on to give me a fixed position for both lights, which is directly above the sensor. And it's spaced about it's uh, um, 28 centimeters above the sensor. This is the, I'm using the Renergy as, as a reference. It's directly above now. And all the light you can see now, all the lights in here are off in the office, are coming from the Renergy, okay? So that's the Renergy light shining down on here. If I move this to one side, you can just see the bar, okay? So let's do, we'll, we'll take that one as a reference. So we'll go source. Okay, so we've got source reading, so I'll then take the energy light away. And we'll put the eye shield on, pull back full brightness in exactly the same spot above the top of the sensor. There, and then do reference. And there you can see, um, you can see that we've got an average down here in the visible range. In the blue, it's almost as bright, but down here in the other colours, it's down to 72%, 71% as bright. So the the uh, eye shield is about 30% dimmer than the uh, energy, okay? So if we test both these lights, because remember we said that we were going to do, um, remember we said that we were going to do, let's just turn that off, a comparison lifetime test. It's a bit difficult, isn't it? Because uh this one if we do a battery life test this one is outputting 30 percent more light than that one um so we'll be comparing apples and oranges which is a bit of a headache i like to sort of you know get it more or less correct i'm, I'm not totally anal but <laughs> in that way so what do we do do we adjust them do you think uh to give both that give them the same amount of light so i could turn the energy down until the light level is the same for both. So there's very little difference in both of them and then run both lights and then get a, a safe measurement that way. 
or realistically should I just turn them both up full and see which ones last longer? I have no idea what to do at the moment. Um, yeah, because it's not going to be a valid test otherwise. I could say this one runs for two hours, but if it's only producing 60% of the light, um, or 70% of the light that the other one's producing, it's it's uh, it's not a valid test, not a valid test at all. Yeah, I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to adjust these up to give, I'm going to put them both in the reference positions, which is there. And then we're going to adjust both of them to give it pretty much the same one. So I'm going to, first of all, I'm going to turn the energy, turn this one on, turn this one on full. So I'm putting the eye shield in on full power. And then go source. And then turn the reddish this one up to be somewhere about there. Well, that was a good guess, wasn't it? Look at that, they're almost identical. That's good. So yeah, within a few percent. So now, if I just turn the other one up full power. Yeah, that's good. I think that's pretty good. So they're on. They've both been switched on at the same time. They've both been fully charged. So we should be able to get going with it, shouldn't we? What I'm going to do is just spread them out like this. So you can see... I'll move the light meter out of the way because we've finished with that pretty much. We've done the done the do with the light meter. And I'm going to put this bar in the middle. We'll put a bar at each end of the light. Okay, so I'm just going to set this up so that they're just on the outside of the picture. So you can see those bars there, just narrowing, making the picture a little bit narrower. That's the two lights, both shining down onto this bench area, as you can see. We'll right, so in the middle here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the exposure on the middle one. So if these get darker, you can see it gets darker. And I'll probably put an object, that uh, a similar object in both places. How about one of these batteries on that side? And a battery on that side. And this is recording now. And as the light fades, the camera won't adjust, and you'll see one side of the picture getting much dimmer than the other until it fades out. And what we could then do with is just something down there so we can see what the light's actually doing. There you go. So in there you can see on that side we've got the energy. This side is from the eye shield. That's illuminated. That's illuminated that the camera is set to constant exposure. So as they fade, if I block the lights off, you can see it getting darker. You'll see which one goes out first and which one quits and which one lasts the longest. They're both set to the same power level of output now. So we're comparing apples with apples rather than apples with oranges. So I think there's nothing more for me to say except to walk out and uh, see what see how this test goes. I think um, the lights are just here. Look, there's one. I might need to move that one just over slightly. Yeah, so the lights are right at the edge of the picture. So they're shining down. Their cone of light is coming out into there. So you can see the edges of them in these on the edge of this old cassette, love cassettes. Right. So this is probably going to be one of my most boring videos, I should think. Will that go out at all? Can I see less? Yeah. So there's my light meter again. Move these out slightly, I think. There you go, they are nice and spread out. They're about the same brightness. That's better. So you'll see which one goes dim first, and you'll see which one goes out, and you'll see how long, because I'll put a timestamp on it. I'm going to watch telly. See you later.
Right, I'm going to have to terminate this test. It's been going 3 hours 15 minutes. The Ice Shield one has long since almost retired. Look, it's flat. In fact, the battery is probably... I don't think it's got because it's not cutting off. Whereas you look at the... Uh, <laughs> you look at the energy one. Same brightness to start out. Look, 3 hours 15. It's still going strong. And it's still got four LEDs on. So it's going to go on for a long, long time. This one is just busted flush. Look, there's no light coming out of it at all. That's the light from that compared to the light from the energy. Um, yeah, so... I'm terminating the test, and if you turn this up, look, to full power, it's still got plenty of, plenty of oomph in it, incredible. So, yeah, as I said before, no, com no comparison. Uh, if you bought one of these and you still got time, send it back. There's the one with the indicators on the back. In this instance, has been much more effective. So, yeah. That's it. It's three hours, 15 minutes. It's still going strong. Chalk and cheese. We're down to three lights now. Still plenty of charge left in it. I imagine it would go on for another couple of hours at least, I would have thought. So if you like that, then just um, leave me a like. And uh, just down in the corner there, there's a subscribe button. Subscribe if you can. I'd appreciate it. And I hope you found that useful.